studio in Georgetown. Kiteshare Radio, 99.1 FM. A pleasant good morning to you and welcome to your morning newscast right here on Culture Radio 99.1 and 99.5 FM for January 4th, 2021. Joshua Van Slackman here. A happy new year to you. In our headlines this morning, AG recommends police probe charges for over $170 million spent on lawyers by the APNU AFC government. Jack Deer's revelations on depletion policy unbelievable and troubling according to Christopher Ram. And underage girl abandons baby after giving birth. And meanwhile, two dead and a third hospitalized after Caribbean smash up. And government to make local content reports public, according to Vice President Jack Dio. And now for the news in details. Auditor General Diedat Sharma has recommended a police probe and charges where necessary for breach of the procurement by officers attached to the Attorney General's chambers for over $170 million in retainer or legal fees agreement signed under the previous a Partnership for National Unity Alliance for Change government. The recommendations followed a special audit of the retainer agreements which was requested by Attorney General and the Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Anil Nanlal. According to reports by the Audit Office, the inspection covered the period May 2015 to the 31st of August 2020 and focused on all transactions related to legal fees being paid to 26 local and foreign attorneys at law, law firms, agencies under the APNU AFC administration. The auditors examined records pertinent to the audit, which included tender board minutes and approved payment vouchers, contracts, and its supporting documents for retaining lawyers for a number of cases, including the no-confidence vote case brought by the previous government, and the matters filed to challenge the outcome of the March 2020 general and regional elections. In a detailed composition of the matter, the auditors noted that the Ministry of Legal Affairs and its contract registered for the period May 2015 to August 2020 had 71 contracts which are awarded to 26 attorneys at law, law firms or agency, totaling $170.828 million. According to the report, the Ministry of Legal Affairs current accounts for the year 2015 to August 2020 among totaling $112.200 million which was expended on employment costs under the state, whilst amount totaling $166.474 million was expended as retainer agreement for 22 attorney at laws and law firms. Unbelievable and troubling. That is how chartered accountant and attorney at law Christopher Ram has chose to describe the recent announcement by Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagdio of Ghana's depletion policy for petroleum extraction in the millions and millions of acres being operated by Exxon's offshore subsidiary in the Starbuck block. According to Ram, the policy announced by Mr. Jagdio amounts to no policy, just expose and extract as much as possible between the shortest possible time. He is of the view that this announcement, which was made during a radio interview, outside of more a formal announcement, which such an issue warrants, must be music to the ears of ExxonMobil, which sees Ghana as its redeeming cash cow. An underage girl who is believed to be 14 or 15 years reportedly abandoned her baby after giving birth on New Year's Day at a sawmill located at Kobana Village, Maruka, Region 1. About an hour later, Kaicha Radio was told the group of visitors to the village heard the newborn's cries and rescued the infant. According to the Kobana Tushau, Tos Peras, the baby was found abandoned around 10 hours on New Year's morning. He said some visitors from the nearby village had docked their boat at the landing located just where the sawmill was. As they got out of the boat, he said sounds of crying caught the attention of a woman who was among the group. Perez said that the woman had told him that at first she thought a mother and her baby was probably close by. However, he continued the place was lonely and no one was there. The woman then decided to follow the cries and reportedly found the infant lying in the grass nearby. She picked up the infant and rushed to inform the Tushau. Perez said that no time was wasted and the newborn was taken to the Kobana Health Center where the medical professions took over. Character News understands that the police have since launched an investigation. Several days of persistent and heavy rainfalls have left the flood-prone community of Charity. Based on reports, the region Kaiser Radio, several housing schemes within the community have been affected by flood waters. 
Charity is the main port of entry on the Esukaba coast, which linked the coast to the Pomeroon, Morocco, and even Venezuela. Reports are that heavy downpours, which started since all years' night, has already affected several residents. Persons who live within the extension schemes told Kaicha Radio that when the drains and trenches overflowed, they were affected by flood waters. In the primary commercial zone at Charity, several businesses were affected by flood waters and were forced to close. Kaicha Radio understands that the capacity of the water to recede from the zone has been significantly reduced due to the buildup of garbage in the drainage trenches within the marketing area. During the latter part of 2020, several efforts were made to have the drainage network in Charity. When contacted, the Regional Democratic Council explained that they were conducting remedial works in the pump station in Charity. The administration pointed out that the sluice is still operational but can only be opened during low tides. Some communities that were also affected by floodwaters include Suddy, Richmond and Mariah's Lodge. Two persons are now dead following a smash-up on the Line Path Public Caribbean Burbies while a third person is in nursing injuries. Dead is Nimrod Prasad, 26, a high car driver, and Terman Magnot, 36, of Line Path Upper Quarantine. The injured person has been identified as 38-year-old Sheikh Mahmoud, a businessman of Number 76 Village. Reports are that just around 18 hours, Mag North was heading north on the western lane in his motor car PLL 4090 with Prasad as a passenger, while Mahmoud was headed in the opposite direction in his car PYY 7581. Mahmoud told the police that PLL 4090 suddenly turned into the lane and crashed head on into his car PLL 4090. The car was flung in a nearby canal and reportedly burst into flames. As a result of such, both drivers and the occupant received injuries about their bodies. They were all taken to the Skeldon Public Hospital, where they were seen and examined by the doctor on duty, who pronounced Magnot dead and Prasad dead, while Mahmoud was taken into the emergency unit and was admitted in a stable condition. A breathalyzer test was conducted on Mahmoud and read zero. You're listening to your morning newscast right here on Kaicha Radio 99.1 and 99.5 FM. Finally, at this time, Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagdio said that during the process of the board national consultation to be had for Guyana's local content policy and legislation, the government is set to push the local content reports prepared by the local content advisory panel. He made these comments during a December edition of Kaicha Radio Show's Guyana's All in You hosted by senior journalist Kiana Wilberg. The panel members comprise President of the Ghana Manufacturing and Services Association, Sham Nocta, former Foreign Affairs Minister, Carl Greenwich, Trinidadian local content expert, Anthony Paul, former Trinidadian Energy Minister, Kevin Ramnarain, trade unionist, Carlville Duncan, and accountant, Floyd Haynes. They were expected to review all existing initiatives and policies where local content is concerned and guide the development of a newly policy and legislation. They were also required to conduct consultation with key interest groups and stakeholders, including those from the private sector, government and civil society. The first report was submitted late November 2020. Dr. Jagdia said that government told the panel that the report was lengthy, so they were instructed to reduce it to about 30 pages. This would serve the purpose of calling duplicate recommendations made by different sectors. The Vice President said that the public views would inform the preparation of a negotiating brief to announce a policy and to submit to lawyers to prepare legislation for tabling in the National Assembly. The local content policy is currently in place was drafted under the former David Granger administration but was controversial mainly due to the consultant to be prepared. It, it was finalized by UK consultant Dr. Michael Warner. He has been hired by ExxonMobil to work on its Center for Local Business Development. Warner is a UK consultant that the APNU AFC used to replace Trinidadian local content expert Anthony Paul, who had worked on earlier drafts of the policy. Paul has been retained by the Air Finale administration to assist with the revision of the policy and the insulation of legislation. And with that, we've come to the end of your morning newscast right here on Kaiju Radio 99.1 and 99.5 FM. Let's remind you that you can get the full details of these stories and much more by picking up a copy of the Kytro News at a newsstand near you or head across to our website at kytronewsonline.com. I am Josh Evans Lekman. Thank you for joining us and once again, a happy new year to you. 
Kaichur Radio. Covering Guyana from coast to coast. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Herbie's 99.5 FM. Kaichur Radio. 